New this morning, quick work from Salem firefighters prevented a fire from spreading at a local church. Crews responded to the Capitol Baptist Church just after 930. They found flames shooting out of the church's education building. The firefighters focused on protecting the church's main worship space and tell us they were able to contain the flames to that educational building. Luckily, no one was hurt. The city of Portland has hit a grim milestone. There have been more people killed on city streets so far this year than in all of last year. A crash this week marked the 36th traffic death. That's compared to 34 deaths in all of last year and 45 in all of 2017. It comes four years after Portland leaders committed to the Vision Zero plan to eliminate traffic deaths altogether. In June, an 82-year-old woman was struck and killed at Southeast 71st and Foster. Days later, the city put one of these no-crossing signs there. In Oregon, all intersections are considered unmarked crosswalks, giving walkers the right of way. So far, Peabot has placed 150 of these no-crossing signs around town as what they call a last resort. Our transportation strategy prioritizes people walking, and so the first thing that we do when we look at a crosswalk is look for a way to make people safely be able to cross it, not to close it. BikePortland.org has reported quite a bit on the city and state's joint effort to use the no crossing signs. Referencing drivers, the city site asks, is Portland seeding our streets to the most dangerous users? If every corner is a crosswalk, why aren't all corners open? Many people who walk around the signs say they think that they could help. Well, a husband and wife face murder charges for allegedly shooting and killing a young Tigard High School graduate. Alex Graydon was gunned down in Eugene back in May. KGW's Mike Benner talked to detectives about the new update in the case. Authorities are calling these latest developments bittersweet. As you might imagine, they are thrilled that they tracked down two suspects. But at the same time, they remain heartbroken that such a fine young man is gone. We've had this up. This framed photo of Alex Graydon has been a fixture inside the Eugene Police Department since early May. And each time we walk past that photo, it would be a nice reminder that we're doing this for a good reason. Detectives will tell you they've been working tirelessly to solve the 21-year-old's murder. You may recall the Tigard High School grad and Lane Community College student was gunned down in the early morning hours of May 4th. Graydon was walking through a parking lot behind the popular Taylor's Bar and Grill, right on the edge of the University of Oregon campus. Alex did absolutely nothing wrong. He was a good student. In our investigation, we found nobody that has anything bad to say about Alex. He's a very kind person, and he was struck down by this horrible act. About a week after the horrible act, as investigators call it, authorities identified two suspects, a husband and wife, and on Thursday, officers went after them. They arrested 29-year-old Kaylee Von Foster during a traffic stop in the Portland area. 30-year-old Regis Kindred was already in custody in Multnomah County on an unrelated charge. The couple is now facing murder charges. Evidence in this case shows that the murder of Alex Graydon was a result of violence motivated by gang-related acts. This is most troubling because Alex had zero affiliation with any gang. As detectives try to wrap their heads around the tragedy, they're looking to speak with this guy. He may go by the name Kane. He's not a suspect, but perhaps a witness to the crime that took the life of a young man with a promising future. Alex was loved by family and friends in Eugene and Tigard and his birth country of Kenya. That right there was part of a statement from the Graydon family. They are asking anyone with information about Alex's murder to continue passing it along to the Eugene Police Department. Back to you. Thanks to Mike Benner for that report. Now, Providence Health is looking into whether vaping played a role in the death of one of its patients in July. The news comes as people are being hospitalized across the country for severe respiratory illnesses. And we want to stress in the Providence case, doctors have not come to any solid conclusions yet about the connection to vaping, but they're seriously looking into it. Recently, the CDC has been sending out warnings as it investigates hundreds of cases nationwide. The Oregon Health Authority stresses that while vaping might not be as bad for you as regular cigarettes, it's definitely not good. There's a, a range of things um, like the toxic chemicals that I mentioned that can cause cancer. We know those are present in these devices. Things like heavy metals and fine particles can be inhaled from the devices. 
The OHA wants doctors to tell them about patients that come to them with shortness of breath, a cough, and chest pain. And this isn't your average cough either. Some people have even had to be put on ventilators. Five people have been charged with rioting in connection with the dueling protests between right and left wing groups earlier this month. Court documents say one man was involved in this confrontation that we caught on camera. Take a look. Prosecutors say Antonio Zamora was part of the group that surrounded buses full of Proud Boys and members of Patriot Prayer. He's identified in court documents as this person that you see there with the teal shirt and rainbow striped ski mask. Those documents say that he kicked a bus window and threw a heavy object at another window. Prosecutors won't say if the four other men charged were also involved in this incident. Meanwhile, Portland police officers also arrested Hannah Ahern for a disturbance that they say she was part of during the protests. Well, check this out. A man walked into Providence Milwaukee Hospital and walked out with their ATM. It happened on August 17th. Police say that he came in with a hand cart and a large cardboard box. He put the box over the ATM, cut the wires and wheeled it right out. Police say he loaded it up into a dark colored Subaru and drove away. If you recognize him, please give Milwaukee police a call. Beavers fans, you may want to advert your eyes on this one. Oregon State struggled on defense as it opened the season last night against Oklahoma State. The Beavers came to play in Corvallis, but just could not stop the visiting Cowboys. Oklahoma State scored on seven straight possessions in route to a 52-36 win. Not the start coach Jonathan Smith wanted to begin the season with. I thought we came out with some good energy. I appreciate our crowd. I really do. Started this game um, with the enthusiasm and whatnot and, and coming out early and, and getting a score was, was big for us. Obviously, we weren't able to sustain that offensively and, and got to be able to get some stops defensively. You know, I thought uh, third down. The Beavers are on the road next Saturday at Hawaii. That game starts at 9 p.m. our time. The 11th ranked Oregon Ducks are down in Dallas this morning. They'll kick off the season against 16th ranked Auburn at Cowboy Stadium. The two teams last met nine years ago in the national title game, which Auburn won. Kickoff today is set for 430. And we're just a week away from the season premiere of Friday night. Defending champion Union hosts Mountain View. Here in Oregon, we've got a pair of top 10 mashups. Catholic Cent or Central Catholic visits West Lynn, while Lake Ridge takes on Tualatin. And it's a battle between the states as Prairie crosses the state line to meet Park Rose. You can just log on to kgw.com slash GOW to vote, and we'll announce the winner next Wednesday.